Yeah, sort of. I mean, if you, I, I guess if you ask my folks, um, they would probably tell you that because I was always entertaining at the wrong times. Like for some reason, dinner time always seemed like a great time to entertain. So it's probably why I'm so skinny. Um, I, I could never finish my meals. I was just like singing and dancing. I think I was always like writing songs. Um, my folks had this like beautiful baby grand piano in my house growing up. And, uh, and so I was always just singing for fun. Um, it was just, it was no different than doing magic or drawing pictures or whatever for me. It was just like, just another way to kind of emote. And um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I was always kind of singing. I never really thought I was gonna be doing it for a career, um, but it, it kind of caught me off guard. Um, I was like, I had this like weekly gig at a, a sushi bar and I was just like singing just like jazz covers and stuff. And, um, and then one of my friends uh, who was like a filmmaker, we started making videos together and then we started traveling around. And, um, and then pretty soon I was just doing music. We went to Montmartre, uh, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. Um, all of the stereotypes and more you can think of in Paris. I don't know. It was just like walking up from the metro and hearing like, like, like gypsy jazz and, and seeing like Paris, you know, as, as you would think as like the fantasy in your head, you know? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go there and just perform on the streets and just get cool footage and meet people. And it was cool because I didn't speak French, but people still were really like attracted to the music. Um, and I couldn't communicate with anyone, but people were trying to communicate with me and like giving me like their business cards and saying like, like send me your music, but they couldn't even like articulate it. But uh, yeah, it was a really amazing experience, like only being able to communicate with music, you know. Just a, a one-way ticket, I guess. Uh, I just, I don't know, I wanted to change the scenery just to see what it would do for for my music, and and um, I found a really beautiful place out there. Just kind of like this, it was supposed to be just a B and B rental, and I ended up getting getting along really, really well with like the landlords, and and now now they feel like my LA family. It's crazy. They have like three little kids that are super talented and play music, and they're they're young, and we we like jam all the time, and um, so it it kind of I don't know. It, it took me by surprise, and I just before I knew it, it was like a year later, and I was still living in this like tree house basically, and uh, and just yeah, living in LA, living in sunshine. Uh, it's really cool. I, I moved to New York in October, um, like two years ago, and. Um, and it was such an amazing feeling. I was living in this like tiny little closet up in Harlem, and uh, and I just felt like I like I made it. You know, it was like this nasty little like there was like dog hair everywhere, and it was it was it was not the best living conditions, but it but it felt so perfect. You know, um, and uh, and there was like this little like Hungarian pastry shop that I'd always just go to and like write poems and music and stuff and it was just really inspiring and, and I, I love the city because it has so much creative stimulation um, and I was writing a lot of music and, and recording with a lot of friends out here so it's really cool to come back and finally be a part of CMJ because I was just like watching shows and you know in awe when I was here. I studied like classical and, and jazz piano for a little bit. Um, I by no means am a virtuoso in either, but uh, I kind of realized I just want to learn more like theory just to see what it would what do to my, to my writing. And it turns out I, I love knowing, but I also love not knowing. You know, it's kind of like magic tricks. It's like once you know the secret of a magic trick, it kind of loses its luster, but there's kind of something beautiful about happening upon a melody or a chord progression and not knowing at all whether it's 
like a, a minor like seventh or whatever, you know, like the, the actual theory behind it. Um, but there's also something really cool about learning kind of the, the technical, you know, the side. So I'm, I'm always kind of balancing the two. Um, but it's, it's nice to know. It's nice to kind of have in your toolbox, you know. Passing seasons, empty bottles of wine, buying chicken. I was working on this record in, in L.A. and um, and just recording a, a lot of music. And, and I found a really amazing team out there, like management team. Um, and uh, and I kind of presented them all this music, and uh, and they were just like, just take your time, write as much music as you want, and um, just you know, kind of like let the artistic process organically just keep growing. And so they gave me a lot of they gave me all the time I needed, and um, and so I just kept writing music and and recording and challenging myself. And then by the time we got kind of a body of work, um, we were talking to just a, like a few different labels. There's some people interested and um, yeah, people just responded well to the music. So. Yeah, the, the EP is, is something that it was all written and recorded in, in Los Angeles. And um, it's very, I think it sounds California. Kind of, it definitely has that kind of, um, you can feel the sunshine in it, I guess. You can kind of like, you can you can like hear like when I was listening to it in an entirety the other day, trying to like figure out the order. I realized that every song started out with this like kind of like echo in the canyons, almost like this like war cry, um, and and I realized it's because all these songs are written like I'm, I'm living in this kind of like treetop abode out there. And so all the songs start out with this like crazy like cry in the canyons. And I didn't even realize I did that until I listened to it all, but it definitely, all the songs kind of um, have to do with the environment that I'm in, you know? Um, but they're all, they're all like uh, songs about love and longing and, and uh, yeah, they're all, they're all love songs, basically. Down to the bottom, 10,000 it was one of the first songs I wrote out in California. Um, it's called it's called Ten Thousand Emerald Pools," and um, and yeah, it was it was a fun song to record because I I don't really even remember recording it. It was kind of like me and my really good friend Kennedy who um, produced the track. Uh, we were talking more about like the music video than the actual song, you know. And I think that's an interesting way to write a song is like just talk about the visuals and the song kind of just happened, you know. Um, but uh, 10,000 Emerald Pools is, um, is actually an address in Las Vegas, um, but it just fits so perfectly. It just, I don't know, the, it has a beautiful ring to it, I guess. And um, uh, yeah, but that's a, it's a song kind of about being in another world, I guess, when you're, when you're kind of in love um, everything kind of slows down. It's kind of like about like weightlessness, I guess. So, yeah.